Hello, N4HNH here with the Yesu FT3DR US version. And uh, this is a HT that I acquired a couple of months ago from a uh, ham radio outlet while they had it on sale. Uh, about $350, I believe, was the uh, price on sale. And I'm going to hit the back button here to get the screen to light back up. I've got the uh, screen saver turned on, so. After, I forget how many seconds I set it for, but after so many seconds, it'll turn off to save your battery. So, uh, dual receive HT, the bold there at the top, that means that would be the frequency I would transmit on were I to press the push to talk button over here. If I want to toggle to the 14652, which is in VFOB, I just hit the A slash B button, and now I would be transmitting on 14652. So, I can... Uh, so I do a lot of hiking for some that's on the air. I could be listening to my favorite repeater. That happens to be a really good wide coverage repeater in North Georgia. And um, there's almost always someone monitoring that repeater. So if, if I'm out hiking and have an emergency, I've got that available to me. But simultaneously, I can be monitoring 146.520. Um, and there's that repeater. That repeater, by the way, is uh, 40 miles away. Look how strong it is on the S meter, full scale. It's a great repeater. It's at 3,800 feet above sea level. So, um, if somebody had transmitted on 14652, I would have heard them just as well. But, and if you're curious, well, what happens if I get a signal on both at the same time? Well, you just got to figure out a way to sort it out with your ears because you will hear both uh, uh, receivers at the same time. So, you'll hear what's being said on the top receiver as well as what's being uh, said on the uh, bottom receiver. Okay, so uh, th I'm, this is just an introductory video to the rig though. I will be getting into more details about the radio, uh, especially the APRS function. Uh, on the top you'll notice it has a, a, a GPS antenna. Um, this antenna here is not the stock antenna. This is one of those uh, signal stuff antennas that you can tie in a knot and it'll straighten right back out. It's made with piano wire. Um, they work quite well, and they're very light. Um, now, for long range, I go to my Diamond SRH770S. Uh, but I can hike, you know, with this antenna on if I want. I can hike with the Diamond just as well. Um, but honestly, I have the Diamond antenna on my FT270, which is what I generally use for soda uh, activations. But just so you know, this is from Signal Stuff. And uh, it's a good little antenna. I think it's about $20, perhaps, uh, you know, some few dollars shipping, something like that. But that's not what this video is about. I just wanted you to see I'm not using the stock antenna because, you know, stock antennas are not usually great. So anyway, again, dual receive on this uh, unit. And um, there's the battery indicator in the top left. Uh, yes, I've been using this battery for quite uh, um, well. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> I had a soda activation a couple weeks ago, used and I used this battery, and I'm just you know trying to let it drain down because you know it's not a good idea to always top them off uh, without letting them uh, drain down to about 20%. So uh, a little bit more about the radio is um, like I said, it's got the GPS antenna here, these two knobs. Now you can reverse the function of what I'm about to show you in case it confuses you because I've had radios before where this knob was volume and this knob was um, to change the memories. On, th on this radio it's reverse, but you can go into the memory uh, settings and you can um, reverse this back to, if you prefer this knob to be volume and this knob to be uh, channels. I've, I've kind of gotten used to it. Um, because I'm less often adjusting volume, which is the ring here, than I am adjusting, uh, let me get this back into view here, than I am uh, adjusting frequency. I'm usually going to be adjusting what memory I want to go to more so than I'm adjusting volume. You can see the red VOL here. I'm going to turn the ring and you see the volume going up. And if you switch to the other VFO, then, then it uh, controls. I'll do it just so you can see. Switch to BVFO, and now if I adjust the volume, I'm adjusting the BVFO. Back to the A, AVFO. 
Now, if you want to adjust squelch, check this out. Now, this is the on-off button. Right above it is, a, is SQL. Tap that, and you'll see that the volume changes to yellow, and you see SQL, and you can use the same ring to adjust squelch. And then tap it again, and you're back to volume. So, again, this is just an overview video. I'll get into more nuts and bolts in a future video. And especially, I'm going to get into the APRS function, which is really really great when you're a summits on the air activator and you get up on a summit and you've got no cell phone coverage and yet you'd like to send a spot out post a spot you can do it from this radio as a matter of fact you can even send text messages between one ft3 dr and another ft3 dr so if you're hiking with a friend and you get separated you can text one and if, if you don't have cell phone coverage you can text radio to radio with uh this FT3 DR is really, really cool uh, function. And that function is what also allows it to post your spot to the SOTA website, even if you don't have access to uh, um, a, a cell tower and can't do it through your phone. So I'll shoot a future video about that. Uh, let me show you a couple other things, though, though for this video. the um, I probably should have turned off the uh, the power save there. I, I must mention though, this thing comes with a hoss of a battery. I'll be showing you um, the battery that it comes with here in a minute because uh, I bought a spare. It's a 2200 milliamp hour um, and lithium ion and uh, it needs it because of that display. But you know, by having the display auto dim like I do, that helps. And like I say, I, I did a act soda activation running the GPS constantly, sending out APRS signals so that my wife and family could track me on uh, the APRS.FI website. All they have to do is in the search box, type in my call sign in a dash seven, which indicates that I'm portable. And it will pull up a map and show exactly where I am. And, and I've got mine set to update my location every five minutes. So imagine that you know, you have something like this, whether you're doing summits on the air or maybe you just like hiking for fun or you camp, um, you can have your family be able to know where you are at all times, you know. So you, you hear of these people that, you know, tragically have passed away hiking the Appalachian Trail and such. Uh, they had no radio communications or cell phone died. They got lost, disoriented. Um, if they had something like this, the APRS site will actually hold on to the last location that this radio um, transmitted. So they would be able to find you if you had one of these radios and the APRS function enabled. So that's a really, really uh, nice feature. I'm gonna show you um, some of the accessories that I bought with the rig. I'll shoot a subsequent video on something called uh, Club Channel Activity Monitor, which is a really, really cool Feature. I'll give you a quick overview of it. Um, I'm going to press the function memory write button and go to CAM. That's Club Channel Activity Monitor. You see G1-1 through G1-5. I can load five of the memories that I've programmed into the radio. That's how it works. You just pick out which five memories you want it to monitor. I have mine set to monitor the uh, simplex frequencies that we use on some, with summits on the air. So I can be monitoring this repeater but I can also monitor simultaneously five more frequencies. Now what it'll do is you'll see a little bar graph pop up to indicate that there's activity on one of those frequencies. So uh, let's say that I'm talking to somebody on that, uh, on that repeater there, and then someone transmits, now I'm so close with this base station, it's gonna light them all up probably, but see those blue uh, line, bar graphs? That's a signal indicator. I was actually transmitting on that one, G1-2. That's 146.490. The other ones are just, uh, well, you can see by the way the signal degrades there. That's just bleed over, essentially. But if I see, if, I, if I'm listening on that, um, on that uh, 443.100, but I see activity there on 146.49, I can tap that, and it loads that memory channel into VFOA so I can now transmit on it, perhaps, uh, to try to get a contact for someone that's on the air or, or whatever. So I'll get into more details about how that works, um, how to program it in a future video, but it's a really cool feature of this rig. 
um, and it's especially helpful for us uh, soda activators. And um, but I, but I should mention too. I mean, you could have a group. You got you can program multiple groups. You could have a group that is uh, perhaps your five favorite local repeaters, and you can be on one of them while monitoring um, four other ones to see if there's activity on those repeaters. You don't hear anything in that mode. You just see the bar graph move up and say, oh, there's somebody on that repeater. Like I said, for us, we're using it for uh, to know if there's somebody on one of the other uh, summits on the air, simplex, uh, two-meter frequencies, or or it could be even um, the call frequency for uh, UHF 446.000. So I want to show you some of the accessories I bought with this rig. Um, one is, uh, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to change the camera and just pan over to them. So bear with me here a second. I'm going to put the radio down. Just hang in there. I'm adjusting the camera here so where I can let you look at the accessories here. All right, so, uh, well, first of all, I always like to put a case around my uh, radio. So this was uh, available from Ham Radio Outlet where I ordered the radio. And this is the SHC-34, Yesu SHC-34 case. I'll show you how it goes around the radio. Uh, just You just drop the radio in here. And you'll need to push the belt clip there, and push it on down, and then you simply take this piece here, this right here, and Velcro. So you know, if I drop the radio, it's got a nice padded uh, case around it. That works out kind of nice. And you you might be wondering, well, is there a screen protector? No, but there's actually one on the radio itself. It comes built in on the radio. Okay, so the case, um, I also purchased the CD41 drop-in charger. That was a little bit of confusion there because um, actually HRO sent me the wrong charging base to start with. <laughs> um, but also, there's no, it doesn't come with a power adapter, so all you get is what you see right here. So I thought, well, how, do I, how does this get power? Well, you actually use the same power supply that comes with the HT in its box. You just plug it into that charging base, and that charging base uh, becomes a rapid charger for your battery. Now, I'm not going to kid you. Even on rapid charge, I think it took about six hours. These are big batteries. So, uh, speaking of batteries, so the, here is a spare battery. And I bought the, they come, the spare, the radio and the batteries come with this little small type belt clip you see here a battery clip but it's not spring loaded so you know I was afraid it can break so I paid extra and bought the bigger um, belt clip here that's spring loaded and you simply um, screw those two screws in from the back of the battery to hold it on so this is separate purchased separately but it's worth it if you want a belt clip uh, this is a, another battery just like the one that comes with the radio. Let me zoom in and focus. That is the, here you go, SBR-14LI. It is 7.2 volts, 2200 milliamps. The other accessories I got, I bought the the one, that, the eliminator, I guess you could call it, battery eliminator. Uh, this is the uh, model number FBA-39. And you can... Um, with that unit, you can put three AA batteries in there. Uh, it does come with that little belt clip there. Um, again, not spring-loaded, but this is an emergency battery. It's light, although I have to admit, it doesn't really... <laughs> this battery is probably even a slight bit lighter, but it's not too heavy, and you got a backup. Now, it's not full voltage, so your radio will operate at a reduced output, but it's an emergency battery that can operate off of three... Uh, double-a batteries so I bought that as well I always like to get one of those and I'll tell you why I've been buying HT since 1991 and I still have my very first HT maybe I'll shoot a video of it one day it's the FT 411 well I can no longer really find batteries for it but I bought one of these 
uh, battery eliminator things, um, the battery case that you can put the uh, double A's in. And um, so I can still use that radio today because of buying one of these adapters. And then finally, the other accessory I got was the Bluetooth earbud, um, earpiece here. And I thought, well, you know, this, I even uh, talked to uh, Mark, our, the manager at our HRO here in Atlanta. I said, Mark, what's the scoop on that earpiece? Does it actually work? And by the way, this is from Yesu, which is the standard Horizon brand, um, SSM BT10, SSM-BT10, Bluetooth 10. Well, Mar I asked Mark, I said, well, what's the scoop on this thing? Does it really work? And Mark informed me that he didn't know. He said, but if you get it and you don't like it, you know, just don't spit all over it and, and trash it, and I'll, I'll give you a refund. Okay, so there is one negative I've noticed about it. What you need to do is not turn the volume up very high on this unit. There is a volume control on the side. You see that right there, a little rocker up and down. That little rocker on the side there. Um, and then the, you long press this button here that looks like a telephone. That is the button to turn it on and turn it off. That's the long, you long press it. And you go inside the radio, of course, and enable Bluetooth. So the one thing that I have found that is negative is if you turn the volume up too high here on the earpiece itself, you get a kind of a hum in, in the uh, audio. So what you want to do is run the volume here low and turn the radio volume up. Now the only negative about that is you got to remember when you finish with the Bluetooth headset to turn the volume back down on the radio because it'll blast the speaker on the radio. But that's the key to, to making that function. Now, why did I get that? Well, when I'm hiking up a mountain, uh, in the past uh, with my other radios, I have a speaker mic that, that I bring around underneath my armpit <laughs> and attach to my vest. And that works out fine. But I thought, well, how cool would it be if I don't even have to have that, if I can just keep this in my ear? And this, this of course, is optional, but you can attach this piece here to ho hook over your ear. Um, this does okay, you know, tw this little piece here twists into your ear uh, and it'll hold it pretty well, but if you're hiking, you might fall or something. You don't want this to, to get out of, to fall out of your ear. So I went ahead and attached this piece to it. It just snaps on, um, snaps on right, right along, right there. And uh, that hooks over the ear, so it's definitely secure. Now you can transmit two different ways. You can turn, set the radio to Vox and transmit when you talk. Um, or you can just momentarily tap the on off button and it'll transmit the radio. And when you're finished, tap it again and it'll uh, go back to receive. Anyway, the audio, I get audio reports that, um, you know, it's not as good as with the speaker mic, but not bad. And I can accept that for the convenience of it. Literally, I can get to the top of a mountain while this is in my ear, go to 14652, start calling CQ Soda, and never take my backpack off. The radio's tucked in my, maybe in the side pouch of my backpack. This is in my ear. I just pull out my phone and start logging. So it worked out pretty good, the, uh, the Bluetooth headset option there. So again, the, uh, that's an introductory video to my uh, newly acquired HT that I, I bought for Summits on the Air, the uh, the Yesu FT3DR. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it helpful, and uh, just uh, keep coming and watching for new videos. If you subscribe, you'll be notified when I post a new video, and I'll be covering more aspects of this radio in future videos, especially the uh, the Club Channel Active Monitor feature and of course APRS. And I want to thank uh, my Patreons. Uh, thank you Chuck for joining today and um, those of you who help by going to uh, www.patreon.com slash N4HNH um, you help me be able to afford to keep this channel alive and I do thank you for that help. All right and uh, again look for future videos on this FT3 DR, and if you happen to get one yourself, I hope you enjoy it as much as I have this one. I, I wanted to wait a couple of months to shoot the video after I was sure that I liked it, okay? So, all right, have a great day. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.